and welcome to another episode of our high school Sunday school lesson. Today, we will embark on a very special journey through Holy Lent. This is a focused time that comes once a year and if understood and planned properly, can lead us to the very mystery of God's mighty act of sacrificial love and glory. For every journey, there's a destination. So often we are in so much more of a hurry than God is that we lose sight of the journey. But it is through the journey that strength, perseverance, character, and habit is developed. It is through the journey that we develop skills of when to be still and when to go. It is through the journey that one may deviate and get lost, but if focused on the goal, may do a U-turn and start over with a clearer sense of direction. Lent is a 55-day journey to our destination, which is the cross and resurrection. Lent, or the Great Fast, starts with a pre-Lent fast of one week, followed by a 40-day fast commemorating Christ's fasting on the mountain leading up to Holy Week or Pascha. The word Pascha is the Hebrew word which means Passover. Pascha is used because it describes what Christ did for us. Just as the blood of the sacrificed lamb kept the angel of death away from the Hebrews as we read in Exodus, so it is Christ's sacrifice as the new Passover lamb that his blood allows us to pass from death to life. Now before we take an adventure through the weeks of Lent, I wish to touch on the meaning and behavior of fasting. Christ fasted and taught us to fast. Although Christ did not need to fast, he did so for our sake. Can it make sense that Christ himself fasted and I don't? The point of fasting is to give up a measure of our dependence upon the material world in order to experience personally our hunger for God. The very foundation of fasting and prayer is repentance. Fasting is a tool for repentance to overcome sin and be disciplined in our body, thoughts, and action. St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, in chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. One of the church fathers likened the Spirit and the flesh to each other with this image to show how they are contrary to each other. Imagine the spirit of an eagle and the flesh of a dog are tied to each other. When you feed the eagle well, it carries the dog and both become lifted and higher. But if the dog is fed more, he will bring the eagle down. One has to lead. If our fasting is strictly just food, you end up starving the dog. If our fasting is strictly just food, you end up starving the dog and the eagle, and both will die. Let's not miss out on the point of fasting and cut around its corners. The point is not, is there eggs or milk in this food? Is there siami cheese? Fasting will be horrible if we invest all our energy and concerns around that. Rather, fasting is hunger for God. The objective of fasting is to imitate Christ. Eating God's word surpasses the joy of a temporary satisfaction of food. 
Fasting is not a period of deprivation. It is the basis of Christ's call for us to come to him, to sit with him, and to enjoy his fellowship. And he will feed us as he fed the people before. He wants us not to worry about food, body, and materialistic things. He wants us to live with him as if we were in heaven. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I pray that we don't become so hypocritical during this journey and concern ourselves with the outward neglecting the spirit. You see, we can see a beautiful car, but it is only as effective as its engine within it. Because if it doesn't perform, it essentially is useless. God wants that part of us that performs, the part that is productive, the part that knows and desires to know Him. The holy fast in our church is the golden chance for seeking Christ and sticking to Him. The church, with all her beautiful spiritual hymns, rituals, and readings about repentance, is ready to receive us. It is the time of repentance for everyone who loves Christ and wants to live with Him. I wonder how many times I have fasted and how many of those times I met Christ. I wonder how many great Lents and Holy Weeks I attended and how many of them I truly lived the passion of Christ and became intentional about changing my ways. This joyful journey we are about to take has certain landmarks and it is through our liturgical worship during this period that our Holy Church presents to us these landmarks. Every week in this journey is a theme which relates to the Gospel reading of that Sunday. The Gospel reading of the Preparatory Sunday is from the Sermon on the Mount, from the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 6, 1 to 18, which revolves around the joyful worship our Lord Jesus Christ reminds us that our worship, whether through prayer, fasting, or almsgiving, which are known as the pillars of Christianity, is directed towards God, and not to impress people as hypocrites do. Christ is our Heavenly Father who sees what is done in secret and rewards us openly. Fasting is a beautiful period to do good deeds by helping the poor, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, taking care of the needs of others. The person who fasts by not yielding to the needs of their flesh will feel the needs of others and his heart will be moved to serve them. Where do we go from there? In the first Sunday of Lent, we continue our reading from the previous week from the Gospel reading of St. Matthew, chapter 6, this time from verses 19 to 33, which defines the direction of the journey. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us, but seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. At the beginning of the Lenten journey, the soul is not concerned with earthly treasures, food, drink, or clothes, we are concerned with only one thing, encountering our bridegroom, the heavenly king. It is during this time that the devil is working even harder, trying to deceive us and tempt us, which leads us into this gospel reading of the second Sunday of Lent from St. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. This week is known as Temptation Sunday. Jesus fasted right before he was about to begin his ministry. And after he fasted, 40 days and nights, the devil came to tempt him. For our sake and on our behalf, the Lord was victorious over Satan. The church reminds us that the journey has many temptations because Satan, our adversary, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Despite the difficulties of the trials, yet we are joyful because our powerful God conquered the devil. 
regardless of how strong our enemy may seem, and despite the numerous trials, yet he is a defeated enemy compared to our Lord's might and the victorious power of his life-giving cross. The Gospel reading of the third Sunday of Lent from St. Matthew chapter 15 helps us experience the joy in heaven when one sinner repents. Even if we wander away from the Heavenly Father, and even if we journey to a far country, waste our possessions with prodigal living, and become in need to eat the pods that the swine eat, yet we can look to our Heavenly Father. The Gospel tells us how the Father received his returning son, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Despite our sins, our Lord sees a beauty in us. He shows us the road to repentance so we may joyfully walk through it. And when we return to him, he receives us with a great joy. This sorrow for repentance leads to joy on earth as well as in heaven where there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. The Gospel reading of the fourth Sunday of Holy Lent, according to St. John, chapter 4, recounts the joyful story of how the Samaritan woman and the Samaritans met Christ. Christ spoke to a woman, a Samaritan, and a sinner breaking all cultural and social barriers, and offered her a gift of a lifetime, living water and eternal life. Christ is offering each of us today this living water. He is offering himself for anyone who is willing to leave their water pot, leave their old ways, and receive him. In the fifth Sunday of Lent, we come to the town of Bethsaida, from the Gospel reading of St. John chapter 5, where we meet a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. This man had no one to put him into the pool when the water was stirred up. Our Lord changed his sorrow into joy. At a time when he felt desperate in finding someone to care about him or that he may be healed, our Lord went out in the fifth Sunday of Lent, we come to the town of Bethsaida from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, where we meet a man who is paralyzed for 38 years. This man had no one to put him into the pool when the water was stirred up. Our Lord changed this man's sorrow to joy at a time when he felt desperate in finding someone to care about him or that he may be healed, our Lord went to him, not by means of water of the pool, but by his word, he told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. During Great Lent, we experience the joy of complete healing, since healing the spirit from sin is more important than healing the physical ailments. Sin is the illness of the spirit, body and soul, which only Christ can grant complete healing. We then meet a man born blind from birth in the sixth week of Lent from St. John chapter nine, whom Christ testifies that neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works or the glory of God should be revealed in him. He lived in darkness, which was not only the inability to not see, but also more importantly, not knowing the Son of God. Christ granted him spiritual sight. Our Lord met him and asked him, do you believe in the Son of God? And the man answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? To which Christ answered, you have both seen him and it is he who is talking with you. We now approach Palm Sunday, where we rejoice with the multitudes because Christ the King enters our hearts to rule over them. We carry the branches of the palm tree and we go out to meet him chanting, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord only 
to hear a few days later that same crowd shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Every fast is a preparation for a feast. The Lent period is such an empowering one because it leads us to the fast that became the turning point for all of humanity. This is the change that restored our image so that we no longer live in our brokenness and fallen nature. But now we are reconciled back to our Creator and we now live a victorious life with our Lord. Let us struggle to not pass this chance without meeting Christ. Lord, help me to commit this journey to you so that through tasting your ultimate love and sacrifice for me, I am forever indebted to you. Give me the wisdom to make this journey and the time of the year. Lord, help me to commit this journey to you so that through tasting your ultimate love and sacrifice for me, I am forever indebted to you. Give me the wisdom to make this journey and time of the year count and live it out joyfully. If you enjoy today's discussion, I have attached in the description a song entitled Beautiful Journey, performed by an amazing group of girls, which takes you week by week through this joyous Lent adventure with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.